Hi, I'm Eddie, and welcome at the Curse of Knowledge. About a week ago, a political assassination was committed in Japan. The Japanese old Prime Minister, Shinzo Abe, was shot from short distance. According to Standard, a Belgian newspaper, Abe was campaigning for a candidate of his Liberal Democratic Party. Now, I will never agree cold bloody murder, as you cannot take justice in your own hands. And I'm not going to tell you that any attack is justified. But there is one thing that caught my attention. He was campaigning for this Liberal Democratic Party. Let it be just that that leaves a dirty and nasty taste in my mouth. Liberals and democracy? Is that even possible? Do liberals know the true meaning of democracy? Or was liberty and democracy only given to a select group of blind believers in a parallel world where it is possible to live divided and where freedom and slavery are its parallel norms? We have lived in such a world before. Several times, in fact. Millions of people have died just to fight the injustice of such a system. In today's world, we are governed by liberals and socialists. Liberals in power are seeming to forget what they stood for. No longer they are defenders of freedom and free speech. What has changed their political beliefs? What is the urge for political power? What if we look at the European Union today? The European Union has 27 member states. Only 25 states are in the Schengen zone and one will become so in 2023. At the moment, Bulgaria and Romania are not in the Schengen zone, although they are full member states of the European Union. Bulgaria is in progress to become the next member in the Schengen zone as clearly as 2023. Romania is not in the Schengen zone, although that the country is a full member of the U European Union since 2007. The European Council must decide whether Romania can be a member of the Schengen zone, but it needs a vote of all member states. The state that is openly opposed to Romania joining the Schengen zone is the Netherlands. It is the Dutch Prime Minister Mark Rutte that is withholding Romania out of the zone. There are talks that Romania should be ready to become a member of Schengen in 2024. But let's see what Mark Rutte's political religion is. He is a liberal politician and member of the theoretically right liberal party, the VVD. The VVD, or the Volkspartij voor Vrijheid en Democratie, translated into English is the People's Party for Freedom and Democracy. As I said, theoretically. Mark Rutte is the first liberal prime minister since Pieter Kort van der Linde, who was prime minister between 1913 and 1918. Although that Pieter Kort van der Linde was a real liberal, we can see that Mark Rutte is a liberal that stole his citizens' liberties. What catches my attention between those two liberal prime ministers is that Pieter Kort van der Linde was prime minister during all years of World War I. We see now Mark Rutte, liberal prime minister at the fourth evening of World War III. Already behaving as an autocrat with the membership card of the Klaus Schwab's Let Them Own Nothing Club. Another liberal puppet of the Let Them Own Nothing Club is Belgian Prime Minister Alexander de Croo. Due to way too less votes, a coalition was formed between the Open VLD, known as the Liberal Party, the SPA, also known as the Social Democrats, the ecologist of their Flemish counterpart, the Green Party, and the Christian Democrats, also known as the CDNV. Together, they got 62 seats in Parliament, leaving the two largest parties behind with 58 seats. According Belgian law, that is having a maze in its law, it was possible to take power like first-class autocrats. As the Liberal Party had most seats of the coalition, they could deliver the WEF puppet in charge. Belgium's new unelected Prime Minister was born. The newly formed coalition named itself after the Italian composer and violist Antonio Vivaldi. Relating to his four seasons, seeing each coalition partner as a season. If it would not be to their autocratically made pandemic law, we would probably have seen them indeed as a one season government. As they got away with the creation of this pandemic law, we probably see the next elections of 2024 to be postponed. 
All autocratic governments will make sure that they can stay in power as long as possible. For the Belgian Vivaldi government we see four parties and we call it now an autocrat polycracy. Spoken of Antonio Vivaldi, let's take a look at Italy's Prime Minister. As Mario Draghi was Prime Minister, but just recently quitted his political position, we may expect a new liberal WEF puppet that will take over. As Mario Draghi probably saw the next economical crisis coming as an all-eating avalanche, he left to have his successor being blamed for the Italian mis misery. The short-sighted population of Italy will keep the successor responsible for Italy's misery. Emotional actions to what happens at present are always to blame on politicians in the past. Unfortunately, most people are not capable to see the difference between the two. Mario Draghi was a former banker for years, an economist for years, chairman of the European Union for years and only Italy's prime minister for about a year. As banker, economist and chairman, he probably would not have many people or politicians that could be a danger to his position. Being prime minister instead, that is something else. In 2015, he said that his political ideas were liberal socialism. Think about that twice. Liberal socialism. It is impossible to be a liberal with an absolute freedom and democracy mindset when you also want to be a socialist. A socialist, what is everything but never in favor of freedom and democracy in all its forms. We have talked about three European Prime Ministers as far. Let us take a look what the other 23 European Prime Ministers' political religion and ideologies are. Bulgaria, Denmark and Germany have a socialist Prime Minister or Chancellor. Estonia, France and Greece have a left-wing liberal Prime Minister or President. Finland has a socialist Prime Minister. Hungary has a right-wing liberal Prime Minister. Ireland has a right-wing conservative, the same as Croatia. Lettland and Austria have a right-wing liberal Prime Minister. Lithuania, Luxembourg and Malta are left-wing liberal. Portugal has a socialist, socialist Prime Minister. Poland has a right-wing conservative Prime Minister. Romania and the Czech Republic have a right-wing liberal Prime Minister. Slovenia is left-wing liberal. Slovakia is right-wing conservative and Spain and Sweden have socialist prime ministers. I have always assumed that the puppets working for the unelected elite of the European Union would be socialists or liberals. Turns out my assumption was right. Liberals last year have showed us that they enhance communist ideologies. It is liberalism that divided families. It is liberalism that closed businesses. It is liberalism that has taken away your freedom. It is liberalism that is stealing your personal liberties. It is liberalism that closed borders. It is liberalism that want to mandate things. It is liberalism that in some places want to remove opposition. It is liberalism that want to ban free speech. It is liberalism that want to ban free travel. It is liberalism that is in favor of autocracy. It is liberalism that is destroying democracy. They only can do so by hiats or gaps in the law. Taking advantage of these gaps to gain power is the purest form of autocracy. And what do autocrats do best? Blaming others for what they themselves are doing. I hope that everyone can see what is going on in Europe and in the World Economic Forum. Look at how all nations that do not walk in line with the Western elite ideologies are blamed for being autocrats. They lie and deceit to their unaware European citizens. Heavily subsidized mainstream media is telling people what their governments want us to believe. Basically, it comes down to the fact that they lie openly to their taxpaying readers and viewers while they are heavily subsidized with taxpayers' money. Let that sink in for a moment. That is clearly proof that unaware, ignorant and I don't care citizens like it to be screwed over and over again. They pay for being lied to. And then to know that this is 90% of the population. It also is proof that the unelected European elite, together with the World Economic Forum, can install everything their agenda speaks of. That's it for now. Please tell me your ideas and opinions in the comments below. 
If you like the video, then give a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to hear or see more of political and monetary deceit. Thanks for watching.